in this video, we're going to find the derivative of y with respect to x uh, based on this equation, y equals y squared plus x. So um, while it is possible to solve for y and get y by itself, that's a bunch of algebra and it's a real pain. So we don't, we don't want to do that if we can avoid it. So instead, we'll just use implicit differentiation. We'll apply the derivative uh, operation to both sides of the equation. So that will be, let me change the colors here, that will be d dx of y equals d dx of y squared, oops, y squared plus x. Okay, so on the left, we're just finding, well, what is the derivative with respect to x of y? Well, uh, you could say if you're finding the derivative of x, right, this is 1, right? Now, when you find the derivative with respect to x of a different variable y, we essentially do have one, because that's the derivative using, well, what's the derivative of, of you know, a letter is one, right? If you apply the power rule, for example. But then we have to multiply uh, by dy dx because of the chain rule. No, typically we won't write this one times. We'll just say that d dx of y is dy dx without going through that extra step. But that really is what's happening. You are finding the derivative of y with respect to y, and then applying the chain rule. So here, when we find the derivative of this sum of two terms, we're really using the sum rule for derivative for derivatives, but we won't bother writing that that's what we're doing. But we won't write it as a separate step. I'll just find the derivative of this term, and then have a plus sign, and then the derivative of that term. So uh, much like with the previous example, when I find the derivative of y squared, I have to apply the power rule, so 2y is the derivative of uh, the outside function, the squaring part. Now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, dy dx. And I can add the derivative of x, which is 1. Okay. And at this point, I'm essentially, um, I have a, a linear function. It's, it's kind of like I have um, a equals 12a plus 1. It, it's basically the same overall. You know, this, this one doesn't affect the result, right? Multiplying by one doesn't change anything. So this is essentially what I have. I have a linear equation. Um, so I should think of it in those terms. Although there's a lot more going on visually, you know, this this doesn't look like a single thing. It really is. It's a single symbol. Dy dx is one symbol, really. So I'm going to go ahead and um, rewrite this without that that multiplier of one. So dy dx equals two y times dy dx plus 1. And just like if we had a equals 12a plus 1, the first thing I would do is I would subtract 12a on both sides, right? That's how I would get both of the a's on the left. Now, since this is not a number here, um, we can't just combine like terms. It's a little bit different. You'll see what I mean. So uh, when I subtract 2y dy dx on both sides, I'll have dy dx, the one that's already there, minus 2y uh, times dy dx equals 1, okay? Now, the next part um, is not difficult, but it's not obvious. Um, and especially because of the way I wrote this, because I decided to write without that 1, it's a little obscured. So I'm going to actually put the 1 back at this point. It's not that we need it, but it makes things a little bit clearer, I think. Notice that we have a common factor here. We have dy dx in both terms. So um, if I had something like 3x minus 5x, well, you just combine and get negative 2x, right? You would combine the coefficients. I want to think of the 1 and the negative 2y as being like coefficients. I need to combine them. Because another way to write, uh, to write this out is instead of combining coefficients, I can factor out the x and put it outside of some parentheses. But that's effectively the same thing as combining like terms. I really do have a negative 2 there. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. I just have not written it that way. So because these aren't all numbers, like the 3 and the 5, I need to think of the factoring version of this rather than the combining like terms version. Okay, So I'm going to factor out the dy dx, put out some, some parentheses. So this will be a 1 minus 2y times dy dx equals 1, okay? 
So like I said, it's not difficult. I'm just factoring out the common factor, but because there's there's so many symbols here, um, it, it, or so much going on, it, it it's hard to see what's happening until you get used to it. But like I said, it's not very difficult, just factorization, something you've done a bunch of times. So now we can divide both sides by one minus two y, so I'll get dy dx equals uh, one over one minus two y. And there you go, that's the derivative. If we were trying to find a tangent line, then at this point we would need to plug in um, some numbers, uh, but we're not doing that in this example. We'll do that in a future example.